and let us all that we can to build a better future. Lauren, you got a story for the people. What is going on? Well, I have been doing a couple of stories recently about various uh, rulings that the Supreme Court is either looking at again or that they have been sort of just ways that it sort of seems like they're trying to dismantle certain rights of the American people. So there is, and the reason I'm bringing this up now is because there is still some time to do something about this particular act. You can currently, you know, start writing your congressmen, your senators, you can call them, you can, you know, try and get them to codify something, to do something and help the indigenous people of America. So in October, uh, the Supreme Court is going to hear uh, about ICWA. That's the Indian Child Welfare Act. So if they overturn it, which it seems like they are on track to do, they've been overturning quite a lot of laws recently um, supporting Native Americans, uh, then the laws that push Native children to be adopted by Native families are just going to be shattered. So that is what the Indian Child uh, Welfare Act does, is it suggests, it strongly, strongly suggests that if there is a Native child in foster care, um, then they be adopted by Native parents instead of adopting out of the tribes. Um, and the reason that this is important mm -hmm. is because we have done this before as a nation. Um, it is like, I, I don't know how much you know about the boarding schools of the 1800s. Um, it, it's pretty much the, um, removed uh, many of the young children's or social identities in regards to their relations to the tribes, removed any kind of semblance that they had with them, and many of those children lost their lives. There was also similar stories of a mass graveyard found in Canada. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it wasn't just only in the United States, it was in Canada as well, and it, let's face it, it was a genocide. And let's keep that image up there. Um, you know, just, it may, it's a little off topic, and I'll hand it right back to you, Lauren, but, you know, when the Nuremberg trials were taking place and many of the Nazi war criminals were being questioned and interrogated by allied, you know, lawyers and, you know, you know, prosecutors and all that kind of good stuff, especially when it came down to the Americans, you know, when they asked, well, what... Where did you learn to do this? And some of the Nazi, you know, war criminals said, well, we learned about how you Americans handled it with the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Just, just oh. a thing, j j just, so no, just so you know, it's something, you know, that we did in America that was done by so many presidents. So remember, in America, genocide took place. And it's the truth. And if it makes you uncomfortable, it's a fact. Right. And we shouldn't shy away from calling it a genocide, because that's it, what it was. It, it was a we genocide. We took, and I'll say we because it was white people, yep. who took groups of people, like they took these cultures, they took children away from their homes, from their families, and made it impossible for them to go back. So in 1978, ICWA was passed in order to give protections to address state and child welfare and private adoptions agencies that had systematically rem removed almost a third of American Indian and Alaskan Native children from their homes. And 85% of those kids were put in non-Native homes. So that's a lot of kids to take away from their, their homes for little to no reason in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. So... The, again, these, these boarding schools, and, and again, it would be nice to think that the people who are trying to overturn this ruling have, you know, the best interests of Native children at heart, and they, the, certain people certain, seem to believe that they do. Well, well, I make more money. I'm richer. I can give them a better life. You know, it is, seems to be the argument, uh, you know, for taking away the rules that suggest that Native children's families, their extended families, or other people from their tribe take them in. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the, these boarding schools almost seem to start with some good intentions, too. I mean, slightly racist ones, very racist ones. But the people who, the first, the original people who started the boarding schools didn't seem to have evil in their hearts. They became that way. Like, not those people, but the boarding schools themselves the motto ended up being, kill the Indian, save the man, which is just disgusting. Yeah. 
And let's and let's be very clear here. Um, there were many again lawmakers and presidents that greenlit this kind of policy. Yes. And you know it was what? it was law. It was from all from the from from Washington to good old Abe Lincoln and everyone else that followed afterwards. It's been a continuous, ongoing genocide, and it never really stopped. I mean, look what happens to Kodak's pipeline. <laughs> I mean, for crying out loud, uh, people were being tased and beaten. That's it's it's it, history, history never changes. No, it doesn't. And it's so so what they did was originally they were just trying to teach kids how, you know, like, oh, this is reading and writing and art and history. And of course, all of it was given through this lens. But um, because they were being ta- they were taken away from their families. And after about 20 years of the schools being in business, um, they became a lot stricter. Um, you know, they were forced to take new names. They weren't allowed to speak in their native tongues. They had to, like, you know, cut their hair into the European appropriate styles. They were forced to hail Columbus as a hero <laughs> and celebrate the good natives who helped the pilgrims at Thanksgiving. Um, and it was the pilgrims being the Puritans. Yeah, the Puritans. And, and the Puritans weren't religious, and the Pilgrims weren't religiously persecuted. No, they Everyone weren't. got tired of their crap in England, okay? You couldn't drink, you couldn't smoke. You could, they were against Shakespeare. They were against oh, everything. They, were, they hated everything. They, they canceled Christmas. They did. They successfully canceled Christmas. They did successfully cancel Christmas. You know what? Christmas. Everyone got tired of their crap, and they told them, get out of the boat, get out. That, that's, that's the story of the Pilgrims. That's the real story of the Pilgrims. I had a history teacher once who described Pilgrims as the people who lived with the ever-present deadly fear that someone somewhere might be having a little bit of fun. Ah. And I'm like, yeah. Like, um, so again, with these, again, sorry about the history lesson also, but it's important to know where we came from and the, like how this started at first because it's going. it seems to be on par to happen again. So parents tried to stop their kids going to these schools. They didn't want them going there. And... In 1893, there was a ruling by the Supreme Court that made it really difficult uh, for them to do so, and it gave more power to the schools. Um, and so it, and it, that was in 1893, and it wasn't until the ICWA ruling in 1978 that the parents were finally given the ability to deny their kids' placement in, in these schools. Um, so the schools were kind of winding down by the 60s and 70s, but that's around the time that the Indian Adoption Project started, which... I don't know. There might be a more dehumanizing name than that. Well, uh, here, here. Okay, here. I'll test fate. How can it get possibly worse? Uh, so okay. the <laughs> the IAP basically meant that almost anything could result in the state deciding that you were not fit to take care of your child. Hospital stays for literally anything. A rash might be enough. TB could also be a, but if your kid gets sick and you have to go to a hospital, you might get your kid removed from your custody. Uh, one child was taken from a babysitter's house, and when his mom tried to get him back, she was put in jail. Uh, another was taken because their father had died, even though their mother didn't want to give them up, but your dad's dead, so get him, get him out of that's, that home. That's not how it works. Mm-mm. That's not how it works. Another kid was taken because their father was a traditional medicine man and he didn't want to give it up because, of course, we're trying to eradicate a culture here. So Mm. if someone is going to be sticking to that culture, then, you know, the kid's got to get be removed from that place because we can't have it being passed on to the next generation. Because anyway, so there there were thousands of stories like this of kids taken from their homes for little to no reason. Some of them may be weren't in good situations, but again, there's a lot of cultural trauma that has happened, and so people were vastly mentally injured by circumstances that have been forced upon them, and then they use poor means to cope with that and then get punished again. It's like instead of helping, we're just making things so much worse. So the reason that ICWA is now back to be looked at once again by a Supreme Court that doesn't seem willing to listen um, is because of Chad and Jennifer Brackey. Okay, enlighten us who these two people are. So, um, there was a young Native boy who was placed with them in foster care after it turned out that his mom was doing all the drugs. Um, 
he his father ended up losing his parental rights. It didn't go too far into why that happened, but he couldn't go to his dad. So the Navajo tribe, who he belonged to, tried to get the kid placed with them. Yeah. Um, but the Brackings wanted to be allowed to keep him. They and eventually they were. Like they the judge went back and forth, but eventually they were allowed to keep him. They were allowed to adopt him. And then they tried to get his sister. But her extended family went also wanted her placed with them. And because like they had gotten the son, uh, they ended up finally again saying we've got more money, we can do better with them, that she should go with us. The state judge agreed and graciously, so kind allowed limited visitation for her to her Navajo family, which is, yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you for that. So one of the arguments, and this is the scary part, like the Brackings are making, is that the youngest kids, the youngest Native children, are barely Native anyway. Oh. It, I wonder it, it, why, but it, also, I like. Mean, I mean, we, we've, heard, we've heard this kind of talk in the 1930s and yeah. even way before then. I mean, nothing's. Nothing new here, folks, right? What could go wrong? So ICWA means that the tribes have the legal authority to determine who's a citizen or a descendant and who's not. So it takes into account historical harm. Um, it takes into account what's been done to tribes and communities as a function of these racist child welfare policies. Um, and then according to Rebecca Nagel, who's an investigative journalist, she says, Two, this is just another, just a little tidbit. This is just something else. Two corporate law firms represent the oil industry more than anyone else. Of those law firms, uh, they, one, of them, one of those law firms works for every corner of the industry, not just the big companies, but they work for the pipelines and trade organizations and lobbying groups. And that's the firm representing Brackings in their big federal lawsuit. The tribes of America have about jurisdiction over about 2% of the land in America, but that land has minerals, coal, timber, natural gas, and oil worth about $1.5 trillion. The hey. tribal land has about one third of the fossil fuel resources in this country, and the company wants it. Wants it. Now, now, you, now hold on, let's like, keep that image up there. Hey, who, who's gonna be surprised what's gonna happen? Uh, once the oil company gets a green light, uh, green light from the U.S. Senate and everywhere else. I also want to say something, too. We did get a super chat from Human Love and Solidarity uh, who said, uh, The Water is Life Festival by Honor uh, the Earth Bayfront Par Park in Duluth, Minnesota on Sunday, September 4th. All right, that's an event that's taking place. There we go. Basically, you're, you continue taking away the children and eradicating these cultures because, there, I mean, there are native tribes that are gone. They do not exist anymore because of what was happening in the 1800s and with the Trail of Tears and uh, all of the forced sterilizations that were going on at this time as well and all sorts of just brutalities committed against these people. And there are tribes now that don't exist. There's, uh, I think, I can't remember if it's the Hopi tribe. There's like two people who speak the language anymore. Two. Like, it's... <sighs> Horrifying, and like if this, is, if ICWA is overturned, if this is taken away from the tribes, if they no longer have the right to determine who is a member of their tribe and who is not, and they do not any longer have the right to prevent their kids from being just shipped out and adopted to whomever who don't understand where they came from, it's just another stepping stone to just dismantling an entire culture and also the the more that they are able to get away with, the more that they're going to start doing. So we have to stop this now. We have to make sure, we have to do whatever it is that we can do, just if it's just talking to our senator, our representative, our, you know, funding actual, the projects that are proposed by Native people, trying to get their feet under them a little bit more. We can boost that. We can help them right now. And make it so that this kind of thing can't keep happening, that they can't keep getting their rights chipped away, that they can't keep getting their kids taken away, that the big oil companies can't keep coming in and shoving them off their land again over and over. It's, we need to prevent this and we can. And that's why I, like, again, this case isn't being heard till October. There is time to make your voice heard. And I think that we should all be making our voice heard. Look, um, we don't need history to be repeating itself. Um... But this goes back to our point with our lawmakers, B Day in the Supreme Court, Congress, the presidency. Um, 
they will screw you over to help out the corporations. This is a country that's ruled by the rich. The corporations control everything. They successfully lied to a lot of Americans, and a lot of Americans believe this propaganda that we live in a democracy. We don't. We just have our traditions where we're supposed to vote harder and things will get better. But this is another continuation of just the hypocrisy of our republic and of our politicians that, oh, so, just once again, I'm, I'm speechless. They just, they just don't care. They just don't care and they don't respect us. Simple as that.